going to show you how to make spicy tuna rolls three different ways, so stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So smack that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. Spicy tuna rolls were created in LA in the 1980s. But just because it's not originally from Japan doesn't make it any less delicious. And today I want to show you how to make three styles of sushi using my delicious spicy tuna filling. First, we're going to be making hosomaki, which is the most common type of rolled sushi in Japan. It's made by rolling the rice and the filling inside the nori. The second type we're going to be making is called uramaki, which is the most common outside of Japan. And it's made by rolling rice on the outside and the nori and the filling on the inside. Finally, I'm going to be showing you how to make gunkan, which is made with a thin strip of nori around a bit of rice and a ton of filling on top. Let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the spicy tuna, I have 360 grams of sashimi quality big eye tuna, two tablespoons of sriracha, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of sesame oil, a scallion, and two tablespoons of tobiko. For the rolls, I've prepared a batch of my sushi rice. If you need a recipe, hit the link in the description below. I also have a few full sheets of nori, a small cucumber, black sesame seeds, and some chopped scallion greens for garnish. In case you were wondering how to look for good nori, you want to find one with a smooth, shiny surface that's almost black with just a hint of green. A full sheet of nori is a 7 by 8 inch rectangle and you want to cut it in half so that you have a bunch of sheets that are about 4 inches wide. I'm doing this with a knife here, but scissors will work just as well. For the gunkan, we're going to take some of those sheets and trim off about an inch of nori from one end. Then we're going to cut the remaining rectangle into three long strips like this. Be sure to keep the nori in a dry place until you're ready to use it or it's going to start to curl. I usually store it in a sealed zipper bag. For the cucumber, I'm going to start by trimming both ends off. Then I'm going to slice it in half lengthwise. Now you want to cut it into quarters lengthwise and we're going to use the knife to remove the seeds. The flesh around the seeds tends to contain a lot of water, so this will help keep your rolls from getting soggy. I'm using a Japanese cucumber today, but Lebanese cucumbers or English cucumbers will work as well. Now you can slice these in half again to make 8 thin strips of cucumber. If you're starting with a larger cucumber like English or Hothouse, you're probably going to need to cut it into 16 strips. For the scallions, I'm going to start by separating the greens from the stems. Then I'm going to chop the greens up. My scallions are super thin and I like my spicy tuna oniony, so I'm going to be using two of them. But how much you add is up to you and your preferences. Next, I'm going to chop up the scallion stems. Now I'm going to slice the tuna up into thin strips. We're going to be mincing this up, so there's no need to be exact here. Then I'm going to turn those strips 90 degrees and chop it up into small pieces. If you like your spicy tuna chunky, you can stop here but I'm going to mix the scallion stems in and mince this up some more. Although spicy tuna was created in the US, it's probably an adaptation of negitoro, which is made by scraping the rich belly meat out from stringy connective tissue and from between the bones. I use tuna fillets here because buying a whole tuna isn't very practical at home. But if you happen to have a whole fresh tuna lying around, Try using a spoon to coax the meat out from between the bones. 
Okay, this is looking good. So let's get this into a bowl. Then I'm gonna season this with sriracha, soy sauce, sugar, and sesame oil. I'm also gonna add some tobiko, which is gonna give the spicy tuna a fun poppy texture. But this is optional if you're not into roe. Now I'm just gonna stir this together until the ingredients are evenly distributed. Before I start rolling, I'm gonna make some tezu by adding some rice vinegar to a bowl of water and mixing it around. Okay, let's get rolling. I'm gonna start by spreading tezu on my hands to keep the rice from sticking to them. We're gonna be making gunkan first, so I'm just gonna grab a small amount of rice, I'd say about two tablespoons. Then I'm gonna press it together in a rectangle. You wanna use barely enough pressure to get the rice to stick together, so be careful not to smoosh the grains together and turn it into mochi. Nori has a smooth side and rough side, so be sure to get the smooth side on the outside when you wrap the rice. By the way, Gunkan literally means warship because these are supposed to look like old school navy ships. Now I'm gonna give the rice a little press with my finger, which helps the rice fill out the nori while making more room for the filling. Then we just have to scoop some filling into the center of each gunkan. The thing I love about these is the amount of filling you're able to get into each bite, so don't be stingy with the spicy tuna. Next, let's do the hosomaki. I recommend using a sushi mat here because it makes it a lot easier to roll evenly, but if you don't have one, you can use a sheet of parchment paper or plastic wrap. I'm gonna set a sheet of nori with the shiny side down on the mat, and then I'm gonna grab a handful of rice. Then I'm gonna evenly deposit the rice across the nori using my fingers. Be sure to leave a thin border of nori at the top because this is what's gonna seal the roll shut. Now I'm gonna pick and press the rice down to the bottom edge of the nori. This takes a bit of practice, but the idea is to spread the rice evenly across the surface of the nori without smashing the individual grains of rice. You need to make the layer of rice thin enough that you can almost see the nori showing through the rice. Otherwise, your roll's gonna end up too thick to seal shut. Then I'm gonna lay down a thin line of spicy tuna on the bottom half of the rice. Hosomaki literally means thin roll because there's not a lot of filling in the center. Now I'm gonna grab the mat and flip the bottom edge up and over the filling, bringing it right to where the rice ends on the top margin of nori. Then I use my fingers to give the roll a gentle hug and set its shape. For the uramaki, be sure to use a plastic wrapped mat to keep the rice from sticking to it. Since we're not going to be able to see it, it doesn't matter which way you lay the nori on this mat. Then I'm going to spread a line of rice onto the nori without leaving a margin at the top this time like you did with the hosomaki. This means we're gonna need to use a little more rice. Now I'm gonna spread the rice down to the bottom edge of the nori without smashing the grains of rice. To keep a good balance with the filling, you wanna make sure to keep the layer of rice nice and thin for this roll. Uramaki literally means backwards roll because the rice is on the outside and the nori is on the inside. Once the rice is spread all the way to the edges, I'm gonna sprinkle some black sesame seeds all over the rice. You can use other ingredients here like tobiko or fried onions as well. Now I'm gonna flip the rice over so the nori is facing up. Then I'm gonna lay down a strip of cucumber and top it with a strip of spicy tuna. You've got more runway with uramaki, so you can add a bit more filling than with hosomaki, but don't get carried away or you're not gonna be able to seal your roll shut. Rolling uramaki is the same as hosomaki, so I'm gonna flip the bottom edge over the filling and then I'm gonna peel the mat back and roll the sushi until the seam is on the bottom and give it a light squeeze. Okay, let's slice these up. 
You want to use a long, sharp knife and be sure to keep the blade wet so the rice doesn't stick to it. For our first spicy tuna roll, I'm going to cut it in half, line the halves up, and then I'm going to slice the halves into thirds. Then I'm just going to flip them upwards and plate them. Same deal with the spicy tuna uramaki. Wet the knife, slice the roll in half, bring the halves together, and cut the halves into thirds. To plate these up, it's nice to have some leafy garnishes like shiso leaves or daikon sprouts. I also like to sprinkle some chives or scallion greens on my gunkan. With different ratios of rice to filling, each of these spicy tuna rolls brings something different to the party. The hosomaki maintains the traditional balance of rice to filling, while the gunkan is all about the nori and spicy tuna. The uramaki is a fun modern take on maki sushi with a lot of room for creativity. Rolling sushi does take a bit of practice, but I think it's a skill worth perfecting. I showed you three different ways to roll a spicy tuna today, but there are other ways to use it, like inside onigiri or on top of donburi. So let me know how you like to roll in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give this a big thumbs up and share it with all the sushi lovers in your life. As always, I want to thank my amazing patrons for helping to support this video. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. Well, I'm gonna go have a few of these rolls for lunch, but I'll catch you in the next one.